Welcome to this week's video from Delhi Sustainable Farms. This week we are featuring another one of our recipes that you can find on our website, and it's dealing specifically with cube steak or round steak. What we have sold in the past has been cube steak, but now since we are USDA inspected, uh, the tenderizer that they use at the butcher plant doesn't qualify uh, as part of that USDA inspection, so now we have round steak which is no big deal. Um, with round steak, you'll have to get one of those um, meat tenderizers or meat mallets and then kind of beat uh, the meat to kind of get it a little more tenderized. Uh, round steaks comes from a, more, a muscle that's more heavily used in the animal. Um, so it's a little bit tougher and a little bit more lean. So you kind of have to use the tenderizer or do slow cooker methods in order to kind of get it to be more tender. Um, but it's one of a very flavorful steak, and we love to use it for things like fajitas, uh, shish kebabs, uh, this crock pot recipe that I will show you today, uh, country fried steak. Uh, there's numerous different uses for um, this cut of beef. This is one of our favorites, and it's one of the easiest recipes. Uh, we think we can even show you how to do it. Um, so the first step is to unpack your cube steak. This. For, we're, there's two of us heating this, and this turned out to be a little bit more cube steak than we intended, but leftovers are always good, and we'll eat this recipe um, for several days before we are able to get through it. Um, so this is roughly uh, like two and a half to three pounds of cube steak, and we'll kind of zoom in and show you what the cut of meat looks like. Um, so you can see the cube steak, this one's been tenderized from the, the processing plant, and so it already kind of has that cut through it that's tenderized and ready to eat. If you were using round steak um, to get this product, like I had said before, you just use the meat tenderizer, mallet, or any other type of thing um, to get that tenderized. So with this recipe, you just layer um, your cube steak into the bottom. I don't put any uh, liquid in yet. We'll get to that in a little bit. So you just kind of do a layer of cube steak in the bottom of your crock pot. Like that. So now we have a layer of cube steak in. You do a little salt and pepper over the top of it. There's no like exact amounts, just kind of by the look. You don't need too much salt because the rest of the things we're putting in there is going to have quite a bit of salt in it. So um, it's mostly for the pepper. You just kind of salt and pepper it a little bit. And then after that, we use cream of mushroom soup uh, and then put it over the top of it. We're gonna do, there was enough meat for two layers. Um, so we're gonna use two cans of the cream of mushroom soup. So I will put one can down on this first layer you don't have to get it too evenly spread as the mixture heats up in the crock pot. It usually uh, kind of distributes itself out pretty evenly. And so if you don't like um, mushrooms per se, this cream of mushroom soup, you can't hardly tell if there's any mushrooms in it anyway. Kara doesn't like mushrooms at all, but she loves this recipe as well. Um, so even though you may have a family member who may not like mushrooms, there's not enough mushrooms in one can of cream mushroom soup to make a difference in like, the flavor profile. So now that we have one can in, we're gonna do our second layer of cube steak, right on top of that soup layer that we had just put in. And so this recipe makes kind of like a soupy mixture um, with a lot of beef in it as well. Uh, so it's very good to put over um, like a bed of mashed potatoes. Those who are trying to be a little more uh, healthy can we usually do like um, a bed of cauliflower, rice cauliflower um, as well. Um, there's numerous different ways you can do it. Um, kind of depends on your preference if you're if you're trying to be a little more healthy versus uh, have a little more starch in your diet. So. That um, is up to you. We'll kind of show you our end product as well. Um, and just because uh, the blood adds a little more iron, a little more beef flavor, I usually put that in as well. 
And so now that we have that layer of cubes taken, again, like the first layer, you salt and pepper, and then you put the cream of mushroom soup on top of that again. Um, so that is the same as that first step I had showed you. And the last step, um, before turning the crock pot on, is you sprinkle um, some Lipton onion soup mix over the top of it. That way it kind of gives it a little more flavor. This has some salt in it again, so you don't have to use as much um, salt when you uh, season your meat. And it just kind of overall gives it a better flavor profile as well, adds a little bit of onion into it. Um, so you just kind of sprinkle that over the top of it. And we use different, if you can't find specifically the onion mix, there's like mushroom and onion, there's a lot of different options. So it doesn't have to be specific to, um, specifically to the, this box. So once we have that scattered over the top of it, that's the end of the recipe. Uh, you put the lid on it, and then we usually turn it on low. Again, you can do this in the morning before you go to work and come home. So, but for us, we're gonna do it for like eight hours today on low temperature. And we'll show you then the end product uh, in a few hours after this is all done. Your house will smell wonderful. Um, these flavors match up very well together. Um, and also, if you want to make it a little more soupy instead of a little uh, thicker, you can put like a, take one of your mushroom soup cans, fill it up with milk and then put the milk in there as well. Uh, that's an option you can do if you want to make it a little more soupy versus a little more thick. Uh, so that is up to you. Today we're not going to do that because we want to have it um, as less soupy, but you can, you can kind of alter things as you see fit. So now it's been several hours and we will show a picture up close of what the inside of the crock pot looks like with the cube steak in. Um, like I said earlier today, um, we usually eat it with riced cauliflower as kind of the base. We should also use mashed potatoes and use the soup, soupy part of um, the meal as kind of like a gravy. It works very well that way. So um, the last thing to do is to scoop out some of the cube steak. Um, sometimes it will come out in chunks, which is all right. Uh, sometimes it does come out in pieces. It kind of depends on how long it is cooked. If it's cooked a little bit longer than that eight hour mark, they kind of fall apart. Um, if they cook a little less than that, they usually will stay kind of whole, but it doesn't matter either way. Um, so, put a little of the juice on top as well. It kind of soaks into that cold. And then that is all it takes. So you can see, um, it's very simple to do. It's one of our favorite recipes to use with cube steak. We even do the same recipe with roasts as well. You can find all of the detailed instructions on how to do this on our website in the recipe section. So if you like the video, be sure to comment below so we can keep getting ideas on different things to cook. Um, be sure to hit the subscribe button below as well to make sure you stay up to date on our videos that happen weekly. So thank you for watching the video and we'll see you again next week.